I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education with another Teacher of the Year profile and we're fortunate now to be sitting down and talking with Jennifer Walker who is the Teacher of the Year for the River Delta Unified School District. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So tell us about your school. Tell us where you teach and tell us what you teach. Um, I teach in Clarksburg. It's a tiny little rural town on the outside of Sacramento. follows the Sacramento River. Um, a lot of people who are native Sacramentoans don't even know that Clarksburg exists. Um, but it's a little tiny rural school. We have a little less than 200 students at the senior high school. We also run as a middle school high school, Clarksburg Middle School and Delta High School. We're a joint staff, joint admin. Um, but I primarily only ever teach at the high school. So it's a tiny little school. It is public. Um, and I teach English. I teach the junior and senior English classes, and I teach AP Lit and AP Lang and Composition. Occasionally I teach AVID, and occasionally I teach a KC Prep class or an Odyssey class, but for the most part, I am the 11th and 12th grade English teacher. Okay, so you, you deal with all the papers and the writing and the I essays and, yeah. and working on the students with style and, and all yeah. of that. And voice and purpose and yeah. rhetoric, yes. So is it, is it challenging these days uh, in, in the, I hear a lot of people complain about uh, with te how text messaging has a negative impact on writing. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? I haven't fully seen it, though I am guilty of it myself too, <laughs> especially as I'm texting, I start using the letter U instead of writing it out. Um, I don't see it as often as I thought I was going to. About six, seven years ago, I remember doing a lot of reading during my master's program about people being very concerned about it, the, the grammar Nazis, so to say. Um, but no, I don't see it that often, actually. Either, usually the only time I would see it is if they handwrite something or if they're taking notes. And I don't mind when they're note taking if they do a sh their own shorthand like that. But no, surprisingly, they don't, I don't. So when you're working with the students, um how do you stretch to them the importance of writing uh, as a communication tool, just not in school, but in life? You know, what, what do you tell them? We talk about that all the time, that even if they don't like English class, that it is a necessity that they become very literate and strong, articulate writers, that if they would like to be a police officer, that's going to be one of the most important parts of their job is writing expository reports. And so we talk about that, that most jobs require written discourse, whether they're shooting an email to a prospective buyer or their boss or um, asking their landlord for something like a you know, lower rent rate or that kind of thing, that you have to be articulate, you have to be organized, and you have to be persuasive. So I try to always pre present real life context for my students. I think that's really important, especially when you're dealing with something like writing, which is everyone's favorite subject. So, um, so I think real life situations is really, really important. I think it's really important. Yeah. Well, it's a foundational skill. It, it is. really is. It is. So you deal with 11th and 12th grade students, and you're also then preparing them for the next step. I am college. So, so how do you approach that with, with students, with their writing? Um, I try again to prepare them for if even if they choose not to go to a four-year university or some sort of institution, that they will be asked to write in the workforce. And again, we try to um, give them real-life situations. We um, we model business letter writing, resume letter writing, so that it seems more real to them. And then that way, when they leave my classroom, they always have a resume and a cover letter. And they have a draft of, hopefully, a skeleton that they will continue to build for the next several years. Um, that is one of the ways that they leave my classroom prepared for their life post high school, whether that's you know a four-year university or a job. Mm -hmm. Well, and having a resume w yeah. at, when you're in 11th or 12th grade is very important. Yes. All of my seniors leave with a resume and cover letter, and I'm very fortunate to work in a community that's very supportive. We have professionals and business owners come in and they evaluate the resumes and cover letters and give them feedback so that when those students do exit Delta High School, they are ready, as ready, probably more prepared than the average senior entering. Now, you also mentioned that you occasionally teach AVID. I do. Explain I just finished. what people don't know what AVID is and, and why it is such a good tool. Advancement via um, individual determination is hence the acronym AVID. Um, it's designed to get students college ready, promote the skills that they need to be successful in college. It works on study strategies, note-taking strategies, and really just gives them that foundation of how to be successful, time management, organizational skills, mm -hmm. um, self-reflection, because those are really important things if you want to be successful. Time management, 
I always tell my students that's the number one reason people graduate college is time management. <laughs> time management and organization and self-reflection. Mm -hmm. That's the great thing about AVID. Right, it gets students ready, it gets them organized. Mm -hmm. and so. And the graduation rate and the UC CSU going rate for AVID students is much higher. Mm -hmm. than Again, other I think students. that that organization is really important in that mm -hmm. time management mm -hmm. that AVID instills in them. Now, how long have you been a teacher? This will be my eleventh year. Okay. So, just finished my tenth year at the same school site. Really, ten yeah. years at the same school. Mm -hmm. So, right out of college, you. I did. There? Right out of college, I moved uh, to Sacramento, started a credential program, and was lucky enough to get hired as an English teacher before the recession hit, a few years before the recession hit. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't, I was very, very fortunate. I've been in the same school district. So in that 10 years uh, amount of time, what kind of changes have you seen, just in that, really, it's a short span of time when mm -hmm. you think about it career-wise. Yeah. What kind of big changes have you seen in education? I've seen two fundamental ones. One, budget. I mean, obviously, especially as the recession hit. I went from my first few years, I could go to conferences out of state, and my district pushed me to go, um, whereas now they would be asking me why I had to go and I would not be allowed to go out of state. I'm lucky if I can go outside of Sacramento, um, just because of budget costs. And then the second is um, the change of our standards, how we've gone from California standards to now the Common Core, which I'm very excited about. I'm really a big proponent of the Common Core and what it hopefully will bring and mean for California students Why? and American students. Why? Because it's going to focus more on the, the literacy that's so paramount to people's success. Literacy and the whole idea of critically thinking whether you are asking why when you read something or what your politician's motive and biases are. It's forming students to think critically of the world around them. And I think that's what's really important versus the other standards were more about can you demonstrate that you've memorized this kind of th this, this step that leads to that step, that kind of thing. So I like the idea that the Common Core standards will force students to struggle and through those struggles they will learn. So that's, I'm excited. Well, you learn, you learn from not succeeding all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, that's a, a skill that students need to learn. Yeah, and the cross-curricular aspect of the Common Core. Mm -hmm. the, we've been throwing around the word cross-curricular for years and years and years, but Common Core will force people to actually leave their world of just English or just history or just science and to collaborate and have joint projects. And so I look forward to how people are going to actually have to work together to meet the standards. Now, have you always wanted to be a teacher? For the most part, yes. As a student in elementary school, I wanted to be a sign language teacher. Oh. I don't know where that came from, but I did. <laughs> my mother was a teacher. She taught for about 40 years. My brother, who's substantially older than me and a teacher in one of the local school districts, he taught even when I was in high school. Um, and so I kind of grew up around teaching, and it just felt like a natural fit. I started tutoring when I was in high school. And I just, for, I don't know when it clicked, but I knew that that's what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to be a part of the profession that my mother and my brother were in. So what would you say to those people who are thinking of, of teaching as a career? It's incredibly challenging, but it's super rewarding. Um, you will never work as hard for something, but um, the reward far outweighs the demands of the profession. If you want to love your job, then teaching is a good profession. It's a good sales pitch. Thank you, I try. <laughs> we, need, we need good teachers, we yeah. really do. It's yeah. a hard profession to promote interest in. It's not valued as much as other professions, like being a lawyer or a doctor. Mm -hmm. A lot, a lot so. of teachers, well, my wife is a teacher, but a lot of teachers I talk to mm -hmm. say the same thing, mm -hmm. that they feel that uh, the respect level could be a lot higher. Mm -hmm. so, so your sales pitch is, go for it. Yes. If you enjoy working with others, you have to enjoy working with others. Mm -hmm. um, and you want something that challenges you and makes you grow as a person and you really want to give back, then teaching is an excellent profession. Uh, final question, what was your reaction when you learned you were the teacher of the year for your school district? I was very excited. I, at first, my principal pulled me out. She needed to talk to me and she was so serious that I was nervous that it was something negative or bad, but she was just very excited and she wanted to tell me the news privately. Mm -hmm. And it was very exciting. It was incredibly humbling and rewarding to be chosen. So well, I was very excited. Well, congratulations to Thank you. you. We're glad Thank you're here. You. We've been speaking with Jennifer Walker, who is the teacher of the year for 2015 for the River Delta Unified School District. Thank All you right. for joining us. Thank you.